Good morning. So today you are going to use the emotions cards that you had at the beginning of the week. And I have also given you some settings cards. I did give you settings, didn't I? If you guys are at home on Seesaw, I will resave the emotions cards from, I can't remember what day it was. It was early in the week, wasn't it? When we looked at the letter from Pam, because they were in the reading activity. And I will also put the setting cards on there. Now, a bit of an advisory before I turn the board on. These are real pictures from the Blitz, okay? We've learned about the Blitz. It was lots and lots of bombs, okay? So you're not going to see anything, you know, any people or anything like that. But you are going to see pictures of the Blitz. And the Blitz devastated cities, didn't it? Okay, so you're going to see pictures that are quite hard hitting. They're in black and white, which I think also ends up giving it a bit more of a feel, doesn't it, to them? So that is just a warning. These are real pictures. Now it's going to take five minutes before it's turn off. <laughs> The, like I say, real pictures. These are pictures of the Blitz as it happened. Now I'm hoping I'm going to be able to scan through these like my little computer. Let's have a look as we go through. the news and things like that but sometimes this is kind of might, might be what you see in um, different things on news rounds and countries hundreds of miles away from us thousands of miles away from us but this actually is quite hard because it, it happened here okay and this is why we teach about world war ii because the impact this had on our history it's a massive thing in our history isn't it okay and actually we think about how actually moving forward what we learn what lessons we learn I mean, we're hoping that no one ever like Hitler is ever going to be able to get to a position of power like he did before. And that's what we, that's why we teach you about these kind of things. And actually, you guys are really interested in it as well, aren't you? So although these are quite hard hitting, there's lots of positivity that came out of the Blitz. The, Hitler couldn't, the, the idea of the Blitz was Hitler was trying to break Britain, okay? He was, and he wanted to break your spirit. So actually, can you imagine this happening every night? This level of devastation every night in those big towns and cities. You guys out here probably would know nothing about it. Okay, because I don't know how I think, I don't, as far as I know, Cambridge wasn't massively hit. Possibly was, but I'm, I'm you know, it wasn't anything big like the actual, like the Coventry, Exeter, London, Swansea, Cardiff, all those big major cities, wasn't it? So that is why the children were evacuated, because they didn't want this them to be witnessing and hearing about this. But obviously there were people still around. And this is where in the emergency zoo, what we're reading, this is why those animals, why the adults were saying, well, we can't be looking after all these animals. Because you can imagine if things like this is happening, animals are going to be really scared, aren't you? You know, dogs are not scared of fireworks and things. You know, the fireworks are quite small compared to this happening. So that's the reason in the emergency zoo, what we're reading as a classroom reader, why the adults felt that it was kinder to put the dogs and animals down than it was subjecting them to this. Does that make sense? Because it feels quite harsh in the book, doesn't it? I was reading, I thought, oh, it's really sad. And the children found it very, very hard to understand. But actually, when you look at pictures like these, you can really appreciate that actually, this would be really scary for animals, wouldn't it, to have to be to contend with. And also we talked about that actually things like zoos, we don't want lions and tigers running around when their cage gets the door gets blown off or whatever too. Or even like poisonous snakes and spiders and things which they keep in zoos that aren't native. We wouldn't want those running around either. So, you are going to look at one of these pictures and you are going to use your settings and emotion cards. So why did I put, I picked settings and emotions? Why don't I just do settings or action cards? Because an action card, you know, although it's kind of the aftermath. Why did, why did we chose emotions and settings? Is it because um, emotions and settings have um, harder words than the others. Do you mean harder in terms of quite more sort of more hard hitting words? Yeah. So more that will really help reflect. Yeah, I think so. Why do you think? 
Um, because um, uh, they're like um, all different settings and emotions for like how people might feel. Yeah, and it's getting the understand how people felt, isn't it? So the setting is fine because actually you can get some really good setting describing words here, can't you? Some really use some really good words. But also, it's the emotion of it as well. This isn't just a picture. This is real. This is what happened. And therefore, you actually need to understand the emotion of the people who were part of this. And I think that will help you have a better understanding of what happened and why it changed and things like that. Does that make sense? So, your job now, and this is only the starter activity, and I'm going to quickly tell you the next activity before we turn the video off. You're going to choose setting cards and emotion cards to describe one of these pictures. You can choose which picture you're going to do. That is just a warm-up activity, so that's only five, ten minutes, okay? It's not a long, long time, all right? Um, then, this is kind of a bit of a PWP practice. The next job is going to be planning your non-chronological reports, okay? So there's a planning format on the um, computer, and you're going to have one to write on. You're going to plan your non-chronological report, you might use some of these words in your planning of your non-chronological report. However, remember that it is a non-chronological report. It's very fact-based. It's not emotional. It's not a persuasive piece of writing. It's looking at your success criteria. All those features in your success criteria. Yes? So, headings, subheadings, all that kind of stuff. It's more about the text. What you're planning is the text. What information are you going to include? How are you going to break that information up into paragraphs? What's each paragraph going to be? So if you were doing the Battle of Britain, you might do a paragraph about the aeroplanes. You might do a paragraph about the British Air, the British Air Force and how, or how Britain fought back. You might do a paragraph about the Germans. And then you might do a conclusion at the end and a nice introduction at the beginning. What about Battle uh, what about the Blitz? What do you think you would do? How would you separate your ideas for writing about the Blitz? Because you do a paragraph for the Blitz, paragraph for the blackouts, and a paragraph for So the blackouts in terms of how it related to the Blitz. Mm -hmm. So you could do perhaps you could do your introduction, a brief thing about what the Blitz was, so maybe include why it's called the Blitz and what the idea of the Blitz was. Then you could do a paragraph about how Britain because we didn't really fight back as such, but how we kind of, so like the evacuations, the Anderson shelters, the blackout lines, all the things that Britain did to lessen the impact of the Blitz. That's a really good, what other paragraph could we do? How long it lasted and the impact on Britain. So how we kind of fought back. A paragraph on actually the impact, the devastation, the facts and figures about how many people were injured and things. Because that's kind of what you want to know, wouldn't you? If you're reading a non-chronological report, you want to give that information. Anything else you researched about the Blitz that you think, actually, I could build a paragraph on that? Um, like how we held on and then they went to the, the, I think, to Russia. Yeah, so we held on, how long we held on for? It was about 11 months, wasn't it? We put it worked out. And then how actually Hitler then decided he was going to give up because it wasn't getting anywhere and he actually moved on to Russia. Now, remember, the whole point of non-chronological reports, you don't get to do it in order. So you can do... Paragraph, those three paragraphs can, don't have to be in like time order. You need to make sure you've got an introduction at the beginning. So what's the introduction do? Tells them what it's about. Yeah, tells them what you're going to tell them about. What does your conclusion do at the end? Um, tells them a bit summary. about... Summary. Uh, yeah, it summarises. It tells them a bit about what you've already told them and brings it all together in a nice kind of... Like putting the ribbon on the parcel once you've wrapped it up, isn't it? It's like the ribbon on the top. It's like you've done a really nice decorator, let's put a ribbon on the top and bring it all together and close it all up. You are not going to worry about pictures or captions or a beautiful heading. You are going to get the text down, your information down. Using generalizers, active passive, what else is on those success criteria? Determiners, yeah, different determiners. Phrases. phrases, what kind of phrases are you going to use? Are you going to say the same? Yep. We use fanboys. Now, you do need to, you need to use fanboys and you need to use a white bus, don't you? So you need to have coordinating and subordinating conjunctions in there to make your sentences interesting. Don't forget, referring back to that module, you know the one we up leveled? I do not want to hear anything about Hitler being never crossed in anyone's report. 
Oh yes, definitely bullet points. I forgot that. So bullet points. Maybe in your fact box you might have bullet points. I think also we might need to take out funky facts. I'm not sure that's quite fitting with the type of report we're doing. But also never want to hear about Hitler being mega cross. We never want to. Um, anything else? I think that's about it, isn't it really? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do quickly do our emotions and then we're going to get 